Hello. Hello. Hello there. Is that Alvin? Yeah, this is Alvin. Hi, Alvin. It's DJ Gloss from uh, London, the UK. Sound Fusion Radio. How are you? Good. I'm well. How about yourself? Yeah, very well indeed. Thank you. Very well indeed. Nice to hear your voice. Nice and clear. Uh, whereabouts are you in, in the States? I am in uh, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Northeast Ohio, actually. Ah, right. Okay, um, okay. Great. Yeah, so we're kind of like in the Midwest, they call us. Yeah, so um, so you're still in Cleveland then, because you were born you were born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio, as well, weren't you? Yes, born and raised here. Yeah, and um, you've been singing and um, and performing from a very young age, Alvin. Can you t- tell us a little bit more about about that? Uh, okay, I, I started singing probably around like two years old. My father, uh, he was a singer and a, and a leader of a singing group, a soul group back in the seventies, and so. Um, they would have the rehearsals at our house. So my dad and, you know, the rest of the guys in the group would kind of hover around in a circle and they would kind of work on the harmonies and everything. And so, you know, me being a little kid there, I'm kind of like messing with some of everything. So I would kind of like, you know, look between my father's legs so I can be in the middle of the circle Mm -hmm. because I just liked, you know, the sound of what their voices sounded like. And then you had the smell of all this cologne. It was just, you know, I was just a little kid, just amazed seeing my dad do what he loves, and eventually I started to mimic what I was hearing, and that's kind of like where it all began there with the uh, singing. And then oh, I started wow. learning how to play an instrument. Well, Alvin, that's that's fantastic. What a story. Thank you so much. Uh, so what instrument did you start with? I started with the uh, piano um, when I was about three. I don't even know how, how my mom figured this out, but she decided to buy me a uh, a, a bright fluorescent orange Disney Corrigan, and I thought that was the best thing I'd ever seen. Wow. And so immediately I jumped on that and started to kind of just bang out, bang around on it, and kind of just play little things. And in my mind, I can remember these sounded like full-on symphonies in my head, even though to the average listener, it sounded like a kid messing around on a keyboard. But you know, even then, I can hear ideas and was coming up with song ideas even at three years old, as primitive as they, as they were. Oh, um, it wow. was. I recognize that I had the ability very early. That's that's fantastic! Wow, Alvin, that's um, and such a young age as well. But I mean, you play a whole host of different instruments, don't you? I mean, what what instruments do you actually play? Um, I play the piano. I play the uh, guitar. Um, I play the bass. I play drums. Um, I play a little bit of trumpet for a while too, um, for a few years as well. Wow. That's a, that's a that's a, a big repertoire of um, of instruments. Now you're self taught on all of those, aren't you? Yes, I am. Wow! So um, taught just determined. <laughs> <laughs> so so, what did you just just pick them up and start playing and just work it out for yourself, or did you did you work from books? I mean, how how did you uh, how did you learn it? I guess uh, just by doing it, uh, I would imagine. It was it was strictly just um, the desire to play. Like my mom again bought me the organ, and from there she bought me a she bought me a couple of toy guitars, um, another Disney guitar, and then Andy Gibb was real hot at the time, so she bought me an Andy Gibb guitar. And I really thought I was a rock star then. Well, and, yeah, um, <laughs> the Bee Gees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you know I was a Bee Gees fan, you know, still am. So it was like um, it started with those, but eventually. She could tell early on that I had a good ear for melody and ideas. And I mean, I, did, I never used any music books. I just kept on playing. I listened to a lot of music. I've always had a strong ear. Mm-hmm. I remember I had a, a, a family friend who lived upstairs from us when I was a kid. And he always he had a really, really uh, broad music collection. And we did as well. But it was interesting because when I would hear the music play from his apartment upstairs, I couldn't really hear the songs. I could just hear the bass lines. So I would put my ear to, to the wall. And I will listen to the bass lines of those songs. And what it did was it really helped me um, develop an ear for the rhythm yeah. and the bass lines of songs as well. So when I started to play bass, it just came naturally because I had been listening so hard to the wall, to the bass lines over the years as well. So everything kind of just came together. I don't think I actually ever looked at anything as far as music theory um, until I was probably almost a senior in high school. I had pretty much been self-taught without any uh, formal instruction at all, That's all amazing. that way for the uh, 18 years of my life. Well, well, you must have had a natural blue note, if you know what I mean. You must have done, because um, to, to pick all of those instruments up without 
uh, any tuition is is a, a real fantastic feat and well done to you that's absolutely amazing well, i appreciate it man <laughs> yeah it's a blessing it's definitely a blessing <laughs> you see it, i read somewhere about you your um you were classed as gifted and versatile now um mm-hmm. I, I would definitely say both of those with the plethora of I- instruments that you play and the fact that you're you know self-taught and um you know because you, you you go across quite a few genres as well don't you you play across quite a number of genres tell us a little bit about that yes i do um i think that well you know i uh definitely r&b soul gospel um hip-hop um i've done i've played done some stuff a little bit of rock um a little bit of pop i, I think a lot of it has to do with just the music i was exposed to growing up you know being a kid um a kid of the 80s i was born in the 70s but you know by the time i really understood music mm. it was coming into the 1980s and you had mtv starting at that point and that was great for kids like myself because they helped uh, to expose us to music outside of just just the soul music or gospel or r&b experience now we were becoming more aware of rock of pop rock mm. and so that exposed me to a lot of other artists that you know would normally wouldn't have been in my home, so I got a chance to hear the Police and Duran Duran and Thompson Twins and Wham and different groups like that. Yeah. Men at Work, just to name a few, but you know those all those artists that I heard that time began to shape the kind of musician I would become. And then I would say maybe when I was eleven, I got exposed to um, jazz music, contemporary jazz, and and that just changed my whole world around too as well. So as I began to grow continue to develop as a, a, a musician over the years it was amazing man because there's so much that you just can pull from your recall that you've heard over the years that had some effect on you that finds its way into your playing and i began to actually develop a love and appreciation for the music more authentically and then that, and then just with having bands forming different music groups that allowed me to be able to exercise those experiences in my music yeah yeah I, I see. Wow. And um, can, can you remember your first ever public performance? Uh, I, okay, my first ever public performance, and this is a very interesting and funny story. Um, <laughs> growing up, as much as I was into music, I suffered from stage fright to some degree. Right, yeah. So I was always comfortable with singing in groups because that didn't put me in a position where I had to be on stage by myself. Well, this one particular time, my mom had noticed I was always what I call giving shadow concerts because I would always stand in front of the wall and look at my shadow on the wall and I would be singing and dancing and I thought I was before thousands of people in my own imagination. <laughs> my mom decided, <laughs> she says, I'm going to get, get you a manager and try to get you on some shows. So it sounded like a great idea at home and then when my first uh, performance came, I think I had to be about eight. Wow. And it was for a festival. And I have a younger sister, so, you know, my mom took the two of us there. and um, place, the, the place is packed outside, so they, they announced me, you know, come on, you put your hands together for a little Alvin Fraser, you know. So they get ready to have me send me out, and I'm like, no. <laughs> They're like, come on, you want to have Alvin Fraser? I'm like, no. <laughs> I was scared to death. Did not go out. My mom was fuming because she's like you do all this practice at home in front of the wall and all this playing instruments but then when it's time to get out here and do something you're scared my sister went out long story short she sang didn't even practice just sang something they loved her and i was mad and scared didn't go out that was that was my first experience with a public performance it was like it just did not happen (laughs) (laughs) oh elvin well at least um at least you managed to get over that mind you it's a bit daunting isn't it really eight years yeah i mean you know that's that's a lot to ask but um what can i ask you what were you going to perform if you went out there what was it you were going to sing or play Uh, your phone get kind of low. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, what what were you actually going to perform if if your mum had managed to get you out there? What would you have sung or played? Uh, I, what song was I going to sing that day? It was uh, oh man, that's that's taking me back. What was it I? It doesn't matter if you can't sing? remember. I just wondered if you could. That was all. 
I cannot remember. It was so that was like an easy thirty years ago. I just cannot remember <laughs> to save my life. No one's ever asked me what song it was. You're the first person ever asked me. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we're always different at Sound Fusion Radio, Alvin. We're always different. Here. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely great. Uh, eight years old. Uh, I, I feel for you. I can almost feel your stage fright. That uh, must have been very daunting. Absolutely wonderful. So, yeah, it's very daunting, and it, it, it took it took some years to overcome it. You know, but um, it was just like one of those things. Like, if you're going to really do this, you got to kind of come out. And I don't really know why I was ever so afraid when I was that young. Um, it was just one of those things, man. But it was like, you know, you finally get to a point when I was getting into my teenage years, mm-hmm. like. You gotta, you know, if you're gonna ever do anything with it, you gotta get out here in front of people, whether they love you, whether they hate you. You gotta get out here and see what's going on. That was kind of one of the things that motivated me to say, okay, you gotta get out here and test the waters and get outside of your bedroom, outside of your living room, and, and see what's going on. Well, it's good that you mastered it. That's that's you know that's brilliant. And uh, yeah, so so mm-hmm. um, I was gonna ask you. You mentioned a few sort of bands earlier, but who, as you were growing up, who were your favorites? Oh man, um, so many. I, I let me see who I, who I love coming up. Um, I was always I was a fan of the group Heatwave. Mm. Um, loved that group a lot. Johnny yeah, Wilder was like one of my favorite vocalists. Um, I really enjoyed um, man. You name it: George Benson, the Crusaders. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I love the Gap Band. I love Cameo. I love the Whispers. Isaac Hayes. Uh, Mimi Ripperton, Anita Baker, man, Donnie Hathaway, Stevie Wonder. There were so many people yeah. man, that, that yeah. I was close to. Pat Metheny on the jazz side, um, Stanley Clark, uh, Return of Forever. I mean, it, it was just a plethora of people that I listened to, groups, man, that, that really, again, along with the groups I mentioned earlier, as far as the, the, the pop rock groups that I yeah. grew up to listen to. Jet, the police, well, I love Stevie. Yeah, so I, I really enjoyed all that kind of music, man. And it just really, really, uh, Phil Collins, Genesis, all those groups, it really, really helped shape, you know, who, who I who I became as an artist. Mm. Well, I mean, that's a jazz, funk, soul and pop A-list that you've just given me, to be fair. I mean, um, some fantastic <laughs> names in there, you know, um, and wonderful influences. I mean, Pat Metheny, wow, on the jazz front. I mean, you know, that's yes. unique in, in its own way. I mean, Heat Wave... Uh, you know, mm-hmm. whispers and 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 um, you know the Crusaders and oh wow! I mean, you know, you you could have rat- that that list could have been rattled off by me to be fair. So <laughs> fantastic, <laughs> uh, you know, very much uh, in keeping with 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 what you liked there, and uh, that's that's really good. Um, so yeah. I you built a reputation for being a dynamic performer. I mean, from mm-hmm. from stage fright to dynamic performer, that's a big old leap um you know tell us more about that tell us more about the sort of leaving your audiences spellbound and um you know fusing the sounds together r&b soul jazz and you know that kind of thing tell us more about that it's like um you know when you begin to come into your own and as i you know i was telling you earlier from going from stage fright to having a reputation of being a strong performer and that took uh, that took years of cultivation but i think what, what happened is that um, I realized things, lessons I learned along the way from other artists, other musicians, things I watched, things I observed on videos. It was just like, okay, you know, if you're going to do this, you got to go in and and be unafraid. And that was where it was. It's like you you have to get okay. Here's one level: past the fear of performing in front of people. Okay, we got that. But now that you're there, you know, now it's your presentation. What else do you have? Are you willing to? Um, to utilize your gifts to enhance what it is you do, like maximize your gifts. And that's, I reached a point some years ago where I said, you know what, I'm not going to be afraid to to go completely in. You know, I'm not going to be afraid to uh, um, to express myself wholeheartedly in my work. And I think when I began to do that, that changed me as a performer dramatically. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a year with a group uh, called Praise the Teller, and they're like a, they're kind of like a contemporary Christian pop acapella group, and that was something totally different than anything I had ever experienced before in my mm-hmm. career. And I did a year with them, recorded a Christmas album with them, 
And when we were performing together, because this, this group required choreography and everything, and I had never been in a group where I had to have band steps and everything like that. Yeah. But it was such a good training ground because performing before a lot of those audiences, which were different than what I was used to, um, even the demographic of the audiences were different mm. as a whole. Yeah. And what it did was, man, it just really supercharged me to just, you know, interject my whole self into my performances. And I think I, when I, and I left that group after a year of my contract expired to go on tour, it was like I was a different person when I came back. I was, I was doing pretty good before I joined them, but just in that year I was with them, man, it turned my whole performance ability around 180 degrees. So I, I came away from that like, okay, when you give a show, give everything. You're going you're gonna to dance, you're going to make a laugh, you're going to make a think, you know, you're going to give everything you have to these performances. Mm. so that they are really able to feel um, what it is that you're trying to convey in your music and your songs, um, and that they leave there saying, even if they didn't know who I was when they came, even if they were skeptical, like I've never heard this guy before, my goal is to get them in the palm of my hand and create a fan in them when they leave. Mm. Yeah, well, I can I can relate to that. And um, yeah, so, so you kind of honed your craft with the, with the uh, band there, and then when you left it, that's, you know, a real, it's a real sort of, you know, success kind of story. I'm loving that. You know, it's a, thank you so much for sharing that. That's the, you know, not a lot of artists kind of come forward with things like, well, you know, when I was at, like, I used to have stage fright and things like that. I tend not to mention that. So, you know, I think it's great. And it just adds such depth to the conversation. It makes it real. You know, I love that. <laughs> And, uh, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. No, that's brilliant. Um, and then that brings me to the album, A Wonderful Love. Um, okay. Tell us, tell us about the album. Tell us, tell us a little more about that. If you, if you got time. I mean, I'm conscious we've taken up. Some no, no, time no. Already, we're, but... we're, we're perfectly fine. I um, that Wonderful Love was basically an extension of my first album. I had an album that I released in 2006 that was called Love and Faith Volume One, mm. and um. In the years ensuing that, um, when I was ready to work on a second album, I knew that I wanted to do another album that still uh, focused on the similar scene, but I just wanted to expound on it. You know, the first one was like the introduction into it, and then when I was working on A Wonderful Love, it was like, okay, I want to go a little bit deeper. So it's okay, well, Wonderful Love, Love and Faith Line 2. Mm-hmm. Um, the album took me about six years to work on, um, in between this different performances and other things I was doing uh, career-wise and personally. And I initially had, I think I wrote A Wonderful Love first, uh, the actual title track. I think I wrote that just before my first album came out. Mm. And what was amazing about it, I remember like, man, my sound was changing already. When I did that, first demo of that song it was like man my my sound was changing um i was i can see how i was growing as a writer and as a producer just in that one song and and i said wow if this is any kind of idea what the next album is going to be like man you know i can't wait till that finally you Mm -hmm. know comes out but i didn't think it was going to take me six years to uh (laughs) finally complete you know so it was like and then i had recorded like yeah. yeah and i recorded like 30 songs and then it was like, well, I'm not going to release 30 songs. And I said, well, I'm going to put out 12 songs for the new album. And then that didn't happen. So then we got to um, we got to 15. And then it was like, okay, well, when I decided to do a deluxe version, I added three more songs in that I had recorded. So it took us to 18 songs. So it was like, okay, now you got 18 songs when you said you were only going to do 12. Oh, well, for that idea. Um, but I felt like, okay, well... <laughs> Considering that I hadn't had an album out so long, I figured those who were fans of mine from the first album would be, you know, would feel vindicated in the sense that, okay, well, he gave us more songs when he came back out, you know. So I, I wanted to really just delve deeper into that whole dynamic with, with showing the tie-in between, you know, love on all levels, you know what I'm saying, love for God, love for mankind, love for your significant other. And I wanted to kind of really expound on my approach to the theme. So throughout the album, I had a chance to deal with Love and Faith from, you know, happier side, uh, 
and from a darker side as well on some of the songs, you know, um, because I was like, well, life is, has its moments where you have your, your happy moments, you have your sad moments. So if you're going to do an album and, and, and music is a soundtrack for life, then I felt like I needed to be able to cover, you know what I'm saying, uh, cover a mass of different topics uh, that would still deal within the theme. You know, nowadays, a lot of albums that come out don't necessarily have a theme. They're just kind of just a bunch of songs that are kind of put together and called an album. And I didn't want to do that, you know. So for me, it was like having having already an idea for the theme, having a series from the first album to the second one, it gave me the blueprint I needed to assemble the right kind of songs that will be able to tell the story I needed to tell uh, through that particular theme. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big album. I mean, you know, there's a lot of tracks. Um, mm-hmm. And it's very diverse. It uh, covers a whole heap of different topics. And um, I, I have to ask you, have you got any favourites? What 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 are you what are you sort of if you're playing out what are your favorite ones to do? Ah, uh, wow. Well, let me see. My favorite ones, uh, of course, something to remember is one of my favorites. Um, that is a tune. Okay. <laughs> that is a tune and a <laughs> half. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I enjoy that one. I love um, better. Um, the Way to Love is one of my favorites. I love the string arrangements on the beginning of that song. Yeah. And, and to me, that's like some of my best piano and keyboard work is on that song. Um, I love So Slow. So Slow is probably my favorite song. I love So Slow. Yeah, um, yeah like that's a song. If I if I go to a song first, if I haven't listened to the album in a while, I, I always go to So Slow first. That's like my starting. I just love the, I love the feeling of that song. You know, there's something about it. Um, so I enjoy that one. Um, I would say, you know, when they're, your 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 I love fall. Fall is a great song because for me, that was kind of like a throwback to kind of that, uh, kind of light soft rock sound of the mm, 80s. Yeah, definitely. So I yeah. love fall. Yeah. So, you know, um, those are like my immediate favorites. I love them all, but those are the ones that immediately come to mind before you walk away, you know? So it's, it's, it's a great album. Uh, if there's love to be found, I mean, good <laughs> you know, so. well they're all gems I mean the, every single one of them but for me um, you know you, you picked it straight away something to remember you know that um, mm-hmm. that's a, a, a real a real lovely tune and um, you know thoroughly in, you. enjoying that and uh, well I mean music wise this album I mean it's absolutely fantastic my producer put it into our, our shared folders here at the um at the uh, studio and she doesn't very often say to me have a listen to that one or have a listen to that one she just says right the new tunes are in go you know go and have a listen okay. kind of thing uh, but with your album she said have a listen to alvin frazier she said just have a listen to that and i then I, I just had to write back to her and say you know that is <laughs> spectacular <laughs> absolutely love oh, that's beautiful. i appreciate really. that i appreciate that feels good that's uh, fantastic. So, so what you got coming up then, uh, Alvin? What's um, what what's sort of happening twenty fourteen? Have you have you got anything sort of planned? New album, new releases, EP, something, tours, gigs? Uh, yeah, I'm working on. Um, I got a couple of different projects going on. I am working on a couple of things, a mixtape. Um, we decided we were going to work on a mixtape and do a few songs to kind of put those out there, trying some different ideas musically, you know, expanding mm. into some, of, uh, you know, a little bit of, um, I came from hip hop, so we kind of doing some stuff with kind of a New York hip hop feel parts of music on, um, when I'm playing with my jazz trio, we experiment with some of that stuff. And, yeah, the and, Joshua and we're, Trio. We're looking at, yeah, the Joshua Trio, and yeah. we're looking at going to the recording studio this year as well to record a project finally. We're, we're in our 10th year as a band, so, uh, we figured you know, it was long overdue. Um, all of us are kind of doing our own thing, but now we said, okay, it's kind of now time because the demand for an album is there. So we're going to go ahead and we started sketching out the idea to put together an album for that band. And then uh, I'm working on a grassroots tour to promote uh, A Wonderful Love. Yeah. And we're mm-hmm. hoping that we can culminate uh, some dates in London maybe later in the year. We're still trying to you know, connect with some promoters over there and see if uh, they can get us 
get a soul where they would do something. Um, so, I, cause I would love to connect with that audience in person. Wonderful. So yeah. kind of doing that, you know, and I'm acting as well. So I've, I've got a, you know, a couple of things. Uh, you may see me in Captain America too, in a couple of scenes here and there. Well, uh, do, do you actually out. do you have time to sleep at all? Do you ever do that? <laughs> you seem <laughs> a very right. busy man. <laughs> I find a little time to sleep, uh, you know, between the different things I got going on. But you know, you, when you when you do what you love, they say it's never you'll never work a day in your life. Absolutely so, um, right. I can I can absolutely support that. Yep. Yeah. So it's like I um I just try to stay stay busy, and like I said, because I love what I do, I'm I, I'm very blessed, DJ Rock, because. I get a chance to do, you know, I, I can perform as an artist, as a vocalist, as a musician. You know, I can play. I got two bands of my own. I have an R&B funk group that plays a lot of the stuff I was talking about. We do the cameo. We do the whispers. We do the slave, all those groups like that. Wonderful. And then I have the Joshua Trio, which allows me to do anything from Miles Davis to uh, to Chikoria to Robert Glasper to whatever. So. You know, I get a chance to express myself in a lot of different ways, man, and uh, and that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. And then I get to act. I get to act. I'm working. I'm producing the web series that I'm directing and that, that I uh, produce, and I, I'm the lead in. That we just finished shooting a pilot for that a few weeks ago, and the buzz is good around that, man. Fantastic. Good crew of people with working with me and actors. So I'm excited, man. Some good things coming down the pipeline. A couple of other little films I'm appearing in that's coming out. So I, I'm excited. Wonderful. That's that's really really good, Alvin. Can I can I be really cheeky then and ask you um, if you've got music from uh, your Joshua Trio that you would like? We we have a wonderful jazz program with a DJ called Doug Chant here on Sound Fusion Radio, and I'm sure he okay. would be really interested in what you're doing with the Joshua Trio. When, you know when you've recorded and. Um, and, and we would love to hear from you about your other your, your funk band, the stuff that does the cameo, you know, the band that does the cameo stuff and and, and slave and stuff like that. We'd be oh, very yeah. interested in all of that. So, you know, okay, great, great, sounds good. And the UK um, jazz scene and soul scene is really kind of booming at the moment. It's having like a a, a, a third heyday almost. It's um, it, it, okay. It's, it would be really interesting to to have a listen. So only if you have got time and if you want to. But I would love to hear some more of that kind of stuff. Not a problem, man. Not a problem. I, I, I would love to do that. That's that's absolutely wonderful. Well, Alvin, if you could um, point the listeners here at the UK, well, we're a global station anyway, so worldwide at your social media, where they can buy your music, um, and uh, you know how they can get in touch with you. That would be absolutely wonderful. Okay, I can do that for, if you want to reach me, the hub to reach me is definitely at my website, which is www.alvinfraziermusic.com. Now, Frazier's spelled like Joe Frazier for you sports fans, Walt Frazier, distant cousins of mine, as I found out. So if you go to www.alvinfraziermusic.com, we keep the site updated with, you know, all my dates, uh, whatever new information that's going on, new news, if it's something I'm appearing in, if it's a show that's coming up, something really big. Um, there's music on the site. There's links that, that you can buy my music uh, from multiple sites throughout the uh, Internet, which is uh, iTunes, of course, Google Play, CD Baby, Amazon.com, uh, eMusic, you name it. You can find both of my albums, actually, uh, Love and Faith Volume 1 and my current album, a Wonderful Love, Love and Faith Volume 2 are available on those sites. On Facebook, you can find me at uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Mr. Mr. Alvin. Frazier. You can find me on there. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at I am Alvin Frazier. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's brilliant, Alvin. And uh, I, I've got to say a massive thank you to you for sharing this time with us uh, today and um, for uh, you know telling us so much about your, your history and, and, and things as you sort of grew up with music and so on. It's, it's lovely when an artist shares so much and I, and I have to thank you for that. And if there's anything that you'd like to tell our listeners, um, please feel free to do so right now. I want to tell hey, I appreciate all the support. The UK has been very, very good to me with this album, man. And I'm so appreciative of, of radio stations like yourself 
and and media over there were all that have been that have been really kind to myself and not just me but a lot of us who are independent artists here in the United States, man. And, mm. and I want to say just keep on rocking, keep on listening to that soul music, that good soul music. We in America, especially as independent artists, appreciate the UK so much because of that support and that longevity of support that you all have for us. So I definitely say we we thank you from the bottom of our heart, especially from the bottom of mine. And I look forward to seeing you all soon in person over there. That would be wonderful. And, um, you know, if you do come over, make sure you give us a shout so we can, one, come and see you, and two, get behind some promotion to get people into your gigs and uh, and to come in and see you. So, um, And if you've got any releases or anything you want to talk to us about, well, you know where we are. Please come and talk to us. We'd, we'd love to talk to you again when uh, when you're ready and when you want to. Yes, sir. DJ Gloss, thank you. I thank you for having me on, man. I had a great time, my friend. Oh, it's been fantastic talking to you, and um, you've got considerably more of your day left than, than we have here in the UK, so you have an absolutely blessed and beautiful day, and uh, we'll speak soon. You take care. Oh, you too. Thank you. Take it easy now. Bye Thank bye. you. Cheers. Bye-bye. 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 Bye.